Hello there gamers, this is Luru and today we will have an in-depth guide about rumor rotations. As a top main player, I am very excited about today's video as we will get to talk about the different factors that you would have to consider when making a decision about how and where to rotate. We will get to see different samples of situations to study the best way of rotating in such scenarios. Also, I will give out some pro tips and tricks on how to be a much better tank or support roamer player. But before we get into this in-depth guide and the road to the mythical wisdom, I encourage you to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are someone who is willing to learn and improve on the game to be a much better version of yourself. Also, make sure that you turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss out on any of my upcoming guides. Now let's get back to the video. There are different phases in this game or stages, if you will. Early, mid, and late. It is important to know that each stage in the game has different objectives or goals. Thus, the rotation for each stages would also differ. Victory! It is important to know that each stage in the game has different objectives or goals. Thus, the rotation for each stage would also differ. Like in early game, if this stage of the game signifies 0 to 10 minutes of the game, wherein players are focused on getting their XP and gold to level up and to get their skills and items. This is when the first trade turtle would spawn for the junglers to get their buffs and gank to side lanes. Then the objectives from mid and late game are also different like the lord fights and closing off the game, which would directly affect how you rotate but for now, Let's just focus on how you can effectively and efficiently rotate during the early game. For me, early game is the most important stage of the game and where roamers about maybe 90% of rotation force. It is the most important stage of the game because the team that takes the early momentum tends to snowball and win the game. So I put a heavy emphasis on my early rotation and to make it as perfect as possible. The key word for Roamer's rotation is impact, meaning to say, you would have to constantly look for a place where you can have the best impact on. By the start of the game, I usually go with the jungler to finish off the buff monster so that the jungler could rotate faster to take in all the other jungler comps for him to hit level 4 as quick as possible. As soon as I help out the first buff monster, there are a couple of ways that you could go. You could go and help the mid to clear the wave there. Perhaps zone out the enemy mid laner or get a potential kill. Rotating in mid would make it so that your mage could help you take other objectives like if you need more people to invade the enemy's buff. So that's one option. Or you may just go straight to the enemy's buff to scout out where they are taking the buff. By doing this, you're getting information for your team where the enemy jungler's direction of farming making it much easier to predict where he would gank first. Like say, if you scout the purple buff and find out that no one's there, this would imply that the enemy jungler is farming the orange buff right now and it is very likely that this would be the enemy jungler's path of farming based on today's standard of jungling. So again, the enemy would start off from their purple buff. Probably take the little wonder if it is near their buff camp, otherwise they can either take this one camp here or go directly to their orange buff camp, take this camp, the crab and look for a gank. Which means, by simply knowing the enemy jungler's position of where he's taking the buff monster first would make it much easier for you to predict the enemy's next moves. Then you could rotate accordingly. In this sample, because we learned that the enemy jungler took out the orange buff first, then it is very likely that they would go in top lane as part of their rotation. And just like predicted, the enemy gang is there to pick off our gold laner. But because we predicted this move by learning their early position, I am able to intercept this gun, not only to protect our MM, but also to kill the enemies. Double kill. Another rotation option is you could invade the enemy's jungle buff. But before doing this, you would have to identify a few factors. Is your team's composition good at invading the enemy jungle camp like is your hero strong at level 1? My hero in this sample is Baksha and I definitely meet the criteria due to Baksha's spammable skill. 
Now is the enemy roamer good at protecting their core and in this case, their roamer is Estes. He doesn't threaten Baxia that much at level 1 because Baxia can counter Estes healing. But nevertheless, Estes is still good at leashing the enemy core. Next thing to consider is if the enemy jungler is strong at level 1 that it could kill me. Alpha is decent but not too strong at early game. But without his ultimate skill, I doubt he can kill us but because I've been using Baxi for too long, I know his limits and I'm positive that our team could invade his buff without dying. Next thing to consider, is my jungler strong enough to invade in terms of how fast he can kill the orange buff and fight the enemies if anyone tried to contest? I think Lance is decent in this criteria and since we meet all the requirements, then we could safely invade the orange buff without taking a huge risk. By invading the jungle buff here, it made a huge impact that most people wouldn't notice. But since you have me, let me discuss everything in detail. Number 1. We took a valuable buff resource from Alpha and even killing him off, which would drastically slow down his early rotation and level. Number 2. Because we killed him and slowed down his rotation, our gold lane would feel more safe to farm without having to worry about the enemy core to gank him. Number 3. We have forced multiple rotations from the enemies because of this play. CC, Estes, and Alice came to the rescue, but ultimately failed to kill anyone from our team. Number 4. Because we forced rotations from the enemy, take a closer look at what they are missing on. Alice and CZ are missing this one whole minion wave, delaying their experience and gold. If this is the old Alice, she would be missing out on her orbs. Then Estes is also losing his value since he isn't really protecting anyone considering that his score already died and he isn't leashing Claude from the bottom lane. Number 5. Lastly, after the clash is settled, my Lancelot is one whole level above and has twice the money as the enemy's jungler alpha. These are some things that are often overlooked but always remember that Mobile Legends is a game of multiple mini decisions that would affect the outcome of the game. It is also a great rotation option to play around your course level 4 ultimate timing. Most core heroes threat goes online when they get their ultimate skill. Most often than not, when your core completes their jungle rotation as I've sampled earlier, the core would almost always hit level 4 by the time they finish this jungle camp here. You could take your core's ultimate timing to play aggressively and kill off the enemy from the side lane. If you could do this from the gold lane side, then that would be for the best. Now, another rotation option is by going straight to your gold laner right after helping take the first buff. Especially if you notice that your MM from the gold lane is being pressured by multiple enemies. Let's use this sample. I'm helping up the core to take the buff so that when someone tries to invade, I would be there to protect him. But noticing that he won't need my help and that the enemy roamer cheat isn't up pressuring my gold lane, then I could just drop everything off that I'm doing now. Then just go straight to our gold lane to remove some pressure off of our MM. In fact, the enemy mage Nana even went to pile on more pressure to our gold lane. But good thing I made it in time to help and protect our gold lane. There would be instances like this that you don't have to play around your core, but instead, you would get the most impact in the game by leashing your MM to protect and win the lane for him. And for those that doesn't know the meaning of leash or leashing, just like the word suggests, I am going to leash our gold laner like a dog. <laughs> Meaning I would stay right beside my MM to protect him. Doing so would remove pressure off of your MM shoulder, making it easier to farm up. Then you could just rotate eventually to the turtle camp in time just right before it spawns. This type of rotation is best in scenarios when the enemy roamer is helping out their gold lane, especially if the enemy roamer is like an Estes or Digi who is very strong at leashing the gold lane. Now, it is absolutely important to remember that gold lane is one of the most important points in the game. And it has the biggest target as most enemies would rotate towards the gold lane just to kill the MM in order to prevent it from farming and scaling towards the late game. Knowing this, you would have to emphasize on protecting this lane more than others 
but at the same time, your presence is needed from other places like when the turtle spawns. Given that, you would have to always take a close look at the map and get an idea of where the enemies are and what they are planning to do. So to make it simpler, I'm just making sure that I'm at the gold lane to leash the MM when the turtle won't spawn any soon and when the core is not in immediate need of any help. But when the turtle spawn counter is about 15 or 10 seconds, I would go straight to the turtle site and ride the move speed buff from the river to get from the gold lane to the turtle site. Now, let me just share with you an awesome pro tip that you would only see from the highest level of games. If your MM dies in the lane, you could make an impact by keeping the enemy minion wave alive by taking the minion aggro and keeping it out of your tired's reach. If you could save one or two minions, especially the gold cart, by doing so, when your MM responds, he could go back to the lane and still farm the minion wave without missing too much of the XP and gold lane that the MM desperately needs early on so that they won't be left behind by the enemy gold laner. Actually, you can do this from the XP lane as well. In this sample, Chow died and the turtle is about to spawn. There is a one whole minion wave that's going to push into our tire that's going to inevitably die. But I could save some of these minions so that Chow could still take in some of the gold and XP. However, be warned that the enemy could also prevent you from doing this awesome protein by hitting you just like in this sample. Good thing though, I have managed to save this one XP card by dragging it over to the side. Chow arrived in time to take this XP card and get a one whole minion wave. Because of this play, Chow managed to get level 4 just in time before we take on the turtle, which is a huge difference between a level 3 Chow, which is not as threatening as compared to a level 4 Chow with the way of the dragon. This is how you can affect and impact the game by keeping the minion waves alive if your teammate dies in the lane. Now before we discuss how to prepare or rotate for the turtle, let us talk about how you would rotate when an enemy is putting pressure off of your core instead. Just as you can invade the enemy's buff, they can also do the same. But one differentiating factor is that you can be the better player by predicting the enemy's movements if they would attempt to invade. So how do you exactly predict this? First, are there any enemy heroes that is known to commonly invade, like Hanzo, Grak with his wall, Tigreal with his pool, and in this case, the enemy has a Franco. You would even notice from the map that Franco is on his way going bottom. It is very likely that he already scouted out our purple buff, but since we're not there, he's on his way to our orange buff. But because I know that there's a Franco and he even showed himself in the mid lane, I have placed myself in the position to protect the buff anticipating Franco's hook. One good way to predict the enemy's movements is by having great map awareness. Let us look at this sample clip. I am currently at the top lane leashing our gold laner. But if you'd notice the enemy's position, the enemy Uranus is inside our base and Chip is near our orange buff side. With that information in mind, it is very likely that the enemy would try to invade our orange buff. So I could rotate over to help our team and protect the buff at the same time. Good thing the enemy core isn't invading yet which is why I made it in time just to protect our buff and even get some counter kill. Here's a great pro tip on how you can effectively protect your buff. You may place your body in front to zone out the enemy and keep the enemy core far enough just outside the retribution range. Don't be scared of dying and it is possible that the enemies would even ignore you and won't even hit you as they would just try to force their way in to invade. So just do your best to keep them out long enough for your core to take the buff. Protecting your buff is even more important on losing gains, as getting this valuable resource might just be the key for a comeback. If your core keeps dying and the enemies invade all of your team's buff, it would be a huge blow to your team and even lower down the team's morale. So be sure to protect your core and secure the buff in losing gains. We're still not done talking about the early rotation. This time, I will give you some pro tips and more samples on how you can effectively rotate around the turtle objective. I will divide this into three parts. Number one, preparation to take the turtle. Number two, what to do during the turtle take. And number three, what rotation options you can take right after taking the turtle. Starting with preparation. 
So how do we exactly or we roamers exactly prepare to take the turtle? First thing you need to know is that the turtle spawns 3 times in this game. It would first spawn 2 minutes into the game then would spawn again in 2 minutes right after being killed. To get a better grasp of this timing, you would actually see from the map the actual turtle spawn timer. My rule of thumb here is that by 15 or 10 seconds left in the timer, I would shift towards the turtle area to prepare for the turtle fight. The reason being I want to be in the turtle camp early is to position myself in the best spot where I could scout out the enemies for information and zone the enemy core easier. The best spots to do that is going to the bushes on the side of the enemy camp. So if you are on this side of the map, these three bushes here are the best spot to do that. Let's take this sample. I'm using chip in this game and currently I have a vision of where the enemy's roamer and core is. Looking at the map, the turtle would spawn 10 seconds. What I could do is take advantage of chip's beacon to teleport towards beacon number 2 to get a great position deep into the enemy lines in order to get information and vision of the enemies and easily target the priority enemy core from this spot. Here is another sample. Right before taking the turtle, you're most likely in the gold lane protecting the MF. Just look at the clock and be sure to be in the turtle site in time for the take. However, Chip is one exemption on this as he can simply use his beacon to teleport near the turtle. So in this sample, I can show myself in the gold lane so that the enemies would think that I'm still in the bottom lane while the turtle is safe for the taking. Then I could just use the beacon to get near the turtle and be in a good position to take a flash and zone out the enemy priority core. Right immediately after taking the turtle, I could rotate back to the bottom gold lane to get another kill. Overall, this rotation allowed me to take care of my MM up until the turtle spawn time. Meaning, I was able to protect our MM for as long as possible but still be able to get to the turtle spawn site in time to do the roamer duties, then go back to the gold lane to kill the enemy MM. This is an ideal rotation and it would feel really good if your rotation flow is as fluid as this. It feels good to make an impact in places where you're needed to be at all times. Now, since we know that we would rotate towards the turtle side 3 times, this would also mean that the gold laner would be left unprotected at these 3 instances. And if you are the enemy, you could use this as an opportunity to pick off the gold laner, knowing that there won't be any backup anytime soon and we cannot control our teammates because there would still be instances that they would play recklessly or for lack of a better term stupidly despite not having any backups then blame the teammates or the roamer for not being there to protect him so what could you do about it you could communicate with your gold laner instead you could send a message that you would be going to the turtle implying that he needs to play safe or the easier way you could signal your team to take the turtle, then signal your MM to retreat to let him know that he would be left unprotected for the next few minutes. Now, if you are the one who's playing the MM in the gold lane, please guys, please I'm begging you, your only job at this time is not, is not to die. Literally all you have to do is not die. You don't have to play aggressively nor obliged to. You're not expected to make any big plays nor kill the opposite gold laner. If you can, then that's good for you. But if you cannot, then that won't be a problem as long as you don't die. So don't be this guy here who died in the lane, then blame the tap for not being there for him. So guys, just don't be this guy, alright? In fact, he's literally the same player in this clip that died again while we're at the bottom lane taking the turtle. So it looks like this guy has a knack of dying <laughs> while his teammates are taking the turtle. So again, don't be this guy, don't be like this nameless guy here. One more way to prepare before taking the turtle is if your team could somehow kill the enemy core. By doing so, it would drastically increase your chance to secure the turtle knowing that there won't be any enemy with a retribution to contest the turtle. So if you could find the opportunity to kill the core just before taking the turtle, take it! It's a worthy risk to take that could pay off big time. For a quick recap of how to prepare, put pressure from the gold lane before going to the turtle camp in time 
inform your gold laner to play safe while your team is busy taking the Lord. Position yourself where you could get as much information that you can get. Then look for opportunities to pick off the enemy core if there's any. But you might also be wondering, Luru, what should we do if our core dies and the team's not in a good position to contest the turtle? Are we going to force it out to contest the turtle? Well, class, that is a really great question. Let's take a look at the sample. Our core died deep in the enemy side of the map. For some reason, we would never understand why. The turtle is up, the enemies are all grouped up in the turtle side, and even our mage died in the mid lane. So let's pause here for a bit and let me ask you a question instead. Where can you make the most impact on? Remember when I said earlier that the gold laner would be left unprotected while the team is taking the turtle? The same sentiment can be said for the enemy team. In short, you could make the best impact by trading plays. Your enemy takes the turtle, then you take the enemy MM. Although I didn't get to kill the popple in this sample, but I managed to delay his time of recalling to the base and even force a rotation out of the Rafaela. So these two facts are already a win for me and I have accomplished making an impact. Now, let's talk about how to rotate or play a stack during the turtle take and the keyword here is zone. The main purpose of a tank during the turtle take is to zone out the enemy core and here are some pro tips on how you can effectively zone them out. Let's use this sample again. Lancelot, the enemy core, is currently dead for 15 seconds. Our core Martis stole the purple buff and the orange buff. The turtle has now spawned and Lancelot is back up. But because the enemy have no more buffs, by process of elimination, the enemy core would likely come from this path thinking he could take the orange buff or from this side after Lance checked his purple buff, which take note is now already gone. So if you would notice, my rotation is just around these two bushes here, which are the possible entry points of the Lancelot. I could position myself here to zone out Lance or intercept his attempt to contest the turtle. And just like predicted, he did come from one of the entry points I'm expecting him from. Meaning, you would have to always look at the map and predict where the enemy core may enter from, so you could be one step ahead by guarding the possible entry points of the enemy core then zone him out from there. And during the turtle fight, you have two options. You can either stick to the enemy core to zone them out, or protect your core from any enemies that would try to zone him out as well. In retrospect, your allies could do the protecting just as effective, so it would be best that you would be the one to get inside to get vision and zone the enemy as you have the tankiness and skill set to do this more efficiently. Now, let us use this sample clip. Turtle is up. Our top first start is destroyed so these two heroes are ready to take the turtle with their team. However, none of them is the core. I'm guarding the spot where they could enter from. But notice that I'm not fully committing my ultimate skill on this Mia, mainly because she isn't the priority enemy right now. But as soon as Granger the enemy core showed himself, I have rotated right away towards him to zone him out. Plus. The Selena and Mia's already been zoned enough back to their first turret, so they won't be too much threat during the turtle take. At this time, my main goal is just to zone this Granger away enough that his retribution won't reach the turtle. I could just place myself here and even use my ultimate, even though it won't hit the Granger solid enough, but my ultimate goal is just to secure the turtle. With my rotation of zoning all threats away and saving my CC skills on the priority enemy core, made it so much easier for our team to secure the turtle and even get some juicy counter kills afterwards. We even stole the orange buff to further pile on the pressure. As a pro tip, try to hold on to your CC skills until the last moment, just before the turtle's life is low enough for the retribution range, which would make it much harder for the enemy core to time their retribution and ultimately prevent them from even using the retribution. Now, what are the rotation options that you can take right after the turtle? Well, there are two great options that you can take. First is simply going back to the gold lane to continue protecting your gold laner from the enemy ganks and even get a potential kill from the enemy's MM. The other option is by stealing the enemy's buff since it is very close to the turtle side. So if you win the turtle fight, you can choose to double down on getting ahead of the game by stealing the enemy core's buff. Here, 
we have Spanish the enemy jungler who's very deep into our side of the base, which is a very bad decision from the enemy team considering that the turtle is up. Because we killed the enemy core, we can take the turtle for free and push this advantage further by taking the enemy turtle buff. We can even pick off some enemies while invading the jungle buff because there would be instances that the enemies are disoriented or disconnected right after a turtle fight. You could rally up your team to invade the jungle buff by signaling invade the enemy jungle. As a tank main player, I make it to a point that I have this quick signal to make it easier to communicate with my team what my next rotation goal is. We have finished talking about the early game rotation and as I have said in the beginning of this guide, Early rotation takes about 90% of the roamer's rotation, then as for the rest of the mid and late game, it is mostly about securing the lord, picking off enemies, and taking advantage of the lord with the most efficiency and how your team could close out the game. If you would be able to follow my early rotation guide perfectly, then it would look something like this. In mid game, the rotation is somewhat the same in terms of taking the Lord which is by zoning the enemies out, securing the entry points of the enemy and having a great map awareness. Similarly, when taking the turtle, just look for the priority enemy core and do the best that you can do to make the chances of securing the Lord for your team as high as possible. Lord is probably one of the best objectives that can help you close out the game. So it is crucial that the team gives emphasis and high priority on taking the Lord and securing it for the team. The enemy is trying to pick off our core before the Lord fight, which I personally think is a great play. But because I'm an awesome tank, <laughs> I can protect our core and even kill all four enemies. The Lord is up for the taking, however, there is still one remaining enemy. And it so happens that it is the enemy core. Knowing this and despite having very low HP and mana, as a roamer, my role during Lord Take still remains that I have to give vision for my team, guard the potential entry point of the enemy, and zone the core. And again, just like predicted, Nolan tried to contest the Lord, but because I have anticipated this, I can zone him out even before he could reach the Lord to steal. Again, to prepare for the Lord, the key is to get there in time to get a good position where you can get as much information and vision for your team by going to this bush here like in this sample. Now here's another sample. I even made my way all around the bushes checking each entry points to see if there are any threats in there 
and as soon as the enemy car revealed himself to be coming from the mid lane, I immediately shifted towards to guard their entry point, zone the enemy core and make sure that he doesn't come any close to the Lord. Another great rotation option that you have during mid game is again, stealing the buffs of the enemy. If you notice, the rotation of rumors revolves around objectives and making sure that your core or gold laner gets a great game. Look at the map. You would see that even the buffs have their timer. And please be reminded that the enemy can see this timer as well. Meaning, the enemy core would eventually want to take their own jungle buff, which makes it easier to predict the enemy's next movement. So you can try to take advantage of this timer to anticipate the enemy core's movement, then ambush the enemy core. And all that is left is to plan for your team to close off the game, which can be done by grouping up and split pushing. There's a whole different guide of how to do this and I highly suggest that you check this video on the left on how you can effectively take advantage of the Lord to close out the game. Or click the video on the right to be an awesome person. Peace. Press start.